Hello and welcome to Tech Equipment's Q&A live session. In fact, I say that every time, Dave. It's not the Q&A live know, session. It's the webinar. It's because I uh, welcome to Tech Equipment's webinar on fluid mechanics. My name's Dion Knowles and I'm the marketing manager. And I am joined by Dave Giddings, who's our ICT manager. Hello, Hello everybody. Dave. Hello, Dion. Great to see you. And now we are joined by many people from around the world. Some of those have already put comments in the chat box. We've got Splendid. Tito from Ecuador. We've got Jeff from uh, New York City. We've also got Semi from Turkey. So if you are out there watching us today, please do let us know who you are, where you are from the world so that we can give you a shout out. Absolutely. Right. All right, great to see everybody here. Lots of uh, lots of people joining us now. So, Dave, how are you today? I'm feeling top of the world. I'm feeling absolutely enthusiastic, beyond words about this. Um, looking forward to talking about fluid mechanics. Um, I hope my memory and product knowledge is good because, like Dion and I discussed earlier, none of this is scripted, so it's all in there. It's all in there. What we're going to share. So, fingers crossed. Everything's going to go smoothly, but I'm feeling great about this one. I like it did last week as well. Yeah, we like it. I like to keep it natural and then it flows. Well. Oh, yes. Yeah. Good. Right. Okay. Um, let's see where we are with our audience. Any more comments to say to everybody? Nope. We are all good. We've also got um, an. Idita Chandel. Idita, do let us know where you're from so that we can give you a shout out. And don't forget, this is a live webinar on YouTube. So it's your opportunity as we go through the, uh, the webinar content to ask your questions. Uh, we've also we've got uh, Joseph Levis Sanso Sansona from uh, Saudi Arabia. So fantastic wow. to see. Welcome. A Welcome. really nice spread of people from around the world. Okay, let's get started now. This is um, a webinar today from Tech Equipment that provides a teaching overview that looks at fluid mechanics. Uh, my name is Dion Knowles, the marketing manager from Tech Equipment, and I'm joined by Dave Giddings. If you're watching this on demand, do feel free to put your questions in the comment box and we'll come back to those afterwards as well. Um, throughout the course of this webinar, I'll be giving shout outs to people. We've just had someone else, um, Adam Feldman, who's joined us from Cornwall. Great to see you there, Adam. I'm going to start off by telling you a bit more about tech equipment. Some of you know who we are and are very familiar with the history of the company, but some of you don't. So I'm going to keep it fairly light and you can find more information on the Tech Equipment website. First of all, um, what are we about in terms of a company? We have a worldwide presence. We're talking 1,200 different organizations that have our teaching equipment in more than 100 countries. Uh, as an organization, we've got an annual sales of nine plus million. We sell directly in the UK and then through sales partners, sales partners like uh, we've got some watching online with us today, like Semi in Turkey who have the local expertise, knowledge and language, of course, which is very important. Um, and working with educational institutions, we're talking universities and colleges, and sometimes industry itself, like so the likes of Saudi Electric, for example. Um, we have one private owner and we have a very expansive range of products. They're all about teaching engineering principles, uh, not just principles, sometimes it's more advanced engineering uh, theory and practice. As a company, we're over 62 years okay. old. Um, if you want to know about the full history, about how two gentlemen met on a train and how it all evolved, you can find that on our website. Now, as a kind of core principles about the company and what drives us to do what we do. It's all about um, skill sets for the global engineering labor market. And that's those skill sets that are needed today, not 10 years ago, but today and tomorrow. And it's about creating a real life understanding um, for students that take the theory 
and really take it to the next level. And we really believe in developing the best products for practical teaching in engineering principles. We're not a me too. We want to be a, a market leader. And we are more than just products. We believe that we're about holistically assisting in the teaching progress mm -hmm. uh, process rather. So bringing together a global community of engineering educators. We've got some social community groups for those on LinkedIn, on Facebook. We've also got a community on YouTube as well. If you check out the, the community tab when you're done here watching this webinar. Uh, we also have student competitions um, as well. So we'll talk about that more after Dave has done his bit, because really what you're here to hear about is about fluid mechanics uh, and teaching those principles. But before we do that, I do want to tell you a little bit about the principles of our product design, because uh, if somebody chooses to work with tech equipment, uh, you need to know how we're really focused and the investment we put into our products. We really believe in, uh, obviously, we create products that foster curiosity and spark passion uh, in terms of the student. We want them to be able to stand the test of time. We've got pieces of equipment, and I'll talk about a case study shortly, that have been used decade over decade. We ha might have academics that have used these same pieces of equipment when they're a student at the same institution. And we're proud to be able to share that with people. We're also very much focused on creating products, improving our products continually as well, that perform faster and more effectively without removing the essential learning outcomes, reducing lag time, etc., filling up, measuring water in hydraulic benches is a prime example. Using the versatile data acquisition to capture uh, lab results over a period of time so that students can go away and leave them all of that kind of thing and then as well we're all about simplifying teaching so yes we um we pride ourselves on creating really high quality um teaching products that match the employer's skills needs of tomorrow but it's sort of for the academics for you as lecturers or lab technicians it's about simplifying teaching as well integrating functionality that matches your your changing syllabus in many scenarios and providing instructional and theoretical material that you'll find on our videos on our manuals that could really provide a whole package ready to roll really ready to plug and play and go. That's me having a little bit of a breather. It's now really time to talk about fluid mechanics. This is what you're watching this webinar for. Dave is going to be telling you more about what we do in terms of um, providing solutions for teaching fluid mechanics, go through all the details, and then we'll have a chat about case studies as well. Okay, wonderful, Dion. Thanks for that. Have you, have you anything more to say or can I can I now jump straight in and start talking about you, what we're here for? You go ahead and jump <laughs> straight in and talk about it. And I'm going to respond to some people over in the chat box right now. Yeah, so because this is live, we're, we're going to be interactive, myself and Dion. So Dion, I have no problem with you cutting me off or in, interrupting me with any questions or any additional content. So I'll just start with, you know, what, what are we here for? Well, fluid mechanics. What what it what is fluid mechanics, everybody? Well, when I get asked that um, in my in my capacity, it's really the study of the way a fluid behaves, and that can be a liquid, and it can actually be a gas as well. So that's also at rest and in motion. Now, fluid mechanics it has a huge, wide range of applications in mechanical and also um, chemical engineering. So tech equipment has an extensive range of very high quality fluid mechanics, teaching and laboratory equipment. Now, just out of interest, this might be of interest to a lot of people. We as a company were the very first company to offer a modular range of equipment for fundamental studies into fluid mechanics, okay? And these practical fluid experiments are available for every or nearly all fluid mechanics courses. So that's just a quick, a quick overview of, of fluid mechanics. And there's a good flyer that you can see there. Now I won't talk individually 
about what you can see on that slide, because more than likely they are going to be covered in their specific range or, or yeah, range further on. But our first slide there, well, pumps and turbines. So just looking from there, we can see a hydraulic ram and H31. Um, this is quite a compact experiment. It, it is used with the hydraulic bench, and I'll talk later about the hydraulic bench. And it's to demonstrate the use and how we use water hammer to create a pumping action. Okay, so it's quite an interesting experiment, this. All of these equipments have data sheets, as Dion will tell you, and they're all available to download from our website in PDF. So I won't go into too much detail about it, each experiment. My intention is just to give a, a paragraph about each one, okay? So we can move on to the H53V. That's our series and parallel pump test set. It's a bench top, it's compact, and it allows students to investigate the operation and performance of, performance of a single centrifugal pump and also two centrifugal pumps, either in series and parallel. Okay. Now this is a fairly new one because we introduced this uh, both with the speed, the series and parallel pumps, which is um, a, a more uh, simplistic version of this one last year. And then we also uh, released this variable version that allows you to uh, both run them in uh, in parallel and not. And there's a lot more measurement functionality on that particular apparatus. We it have is. got, um, we, we did live product launches of this particular apparatus. So if people want to learn more about that, they can look at the live stream playlist and they can find it in there and watch us demonstrate um, how, how we use those pumps in series and parallel. Now, am I right in saying this has got onboard VDAS? Yes, the V right. denotes VDAS. Um, we've got quite a lot of, um, what, uh, quite numerous amounts of our products now have VDAS integrated into them. And that V denotes that it does have it integrated, yes. That's fantastic. So I can see there are some electronic flow sensors on the top pipe. So they will be sending their data back to VDAS where the flow rates will be displayed um, along with the Q coverage of discharge, the Q value, etc. So I've not had the pleasure of actually installing one of these yet. I've installed an H52, which is his younger brother. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting my hands on the 53V. I like this oh. music kit. It's uh, it's really easy to use. It's very visual. You obviously you're getting all the stats and everything on VDAS, uh, but it, it's 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 very nice kind of easy to use approach where students can really it embrace is. it, uh, it and is. you can get instant results as well. Uh, and it's, it it's got noise yeah. to go with it and visual. Uh, it's a kind of very sensory experience. And it's very convenient. It, it can stow it easily because of its size, but not not um, underestimating how good the H forty seven is. This is this is kind of it could, not quite equivalent, but this is just a centrifugal pump test set, single pump, again self contained. Uh, it's floor standing mobile unit. It's got a water reservoir, a pump, a motor, a venturi meter. So we can look at a comprehensive range of investigations and characteristics of a pump. We were also able to demonstrate cavitation with the use of, of a venturi tube inside there. And the H83 is a little bit similar to the 53V. Uh, this is a two stage series and parallel pump test set. Um, again, it's floor standing mobile unit. It has a water reservoir has two pumps, two motors, and a venturi meter. And, a, and again, you can, you can conduct, you can execute a comprehensive range of investigations into the performance and characteristics of pumps, both in series and in parallel, okay? And you can do either analog, analog uh, readout, or you can use a VDAS, you can use them you alongside can. each other or independently. You can. I mean, the analog gauges provide a real good 
insight and even in the modern world in in the most modern ships for example you will still see analog gauges and there's a very good reason for that viewers if there's a sudden catastrophic power outage you have you know without power you might not know what the pressure in a in a boiler for example oh right yeah of course but but with an analog gauge well it cannot it cannot fail because it has no power going to it it just has pressure tappings so even in this modern digital world that we live in there is still a need for a good old analog gauge so they, there you go a little bit of um common sense really you know yeah, but it's an interesting thing to highlight. Um, so I think it's a very good, valid point. I want to do a quick shout out now. We've got Dawid Zeman from Ethiopia, who has also joined us. Fantastic to see you. Reminding everybody we're doing this live. And if you're joining us live, you can ask your que uh, questions in the chat box. To stay on, as we'll be going through many, many different aspects of fluid mechanics, we'll be also looking at other ranges and how we can help people with remote learning later on in the webinar back to yeah, you dave I, I just want to say hello to Derek because that, that was one of my more recent um ict adventures and uh, we, we 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 travel from addis ababa to deborah marcos and a, a, and a journey that i will certainly never forget for the rest of my life for all the right reasons it was absolutely extraordinary the support from the, the their company was was fantastic, and we 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 actually installed a showcase fluid mechanics lab at, at Deborah Marcos. So very fond memories there. Anyway, I will continue. Sorry. Um, yeah, the last product on that page is just a straightforward basic pelt on turbine. This is a very compact experiment. Uh, again, it's used with the hydraulic bench. To demonstrate how a peloton turbine works and we, we, we're really testing its performance okay then on the next slide we're getting into flumes into open channel flows so the picture there we can see is a 2.5 meter fc 50 i believe yeah uh so that means it's got a 50 millimeter wide channel 2.5 meters long um complete with models and instruments for demonstrating flow around weirs and other objects in, in open channels. But moving on to the flyer for its much bigger brother, that's the FC300 there. This is available in five meter, 10 meter, 15 meter. It has a, a width of 300 millimeters, okay? With a wide range of options and instrumentation. And you can see some of those models underneath on that flyer there again if you want any more information on these products either use the comment box or leave your your contact details so we can direct you to to the data sheets okay brilliant well dave i just want to say aina ola uh says hello to you uh, hello good to hear from you um, we've also got uh, Fabio from Brazil. Hendry Anto is with us as well. Wonderful. So, lots did of you lots say of did you say Flavio from Brazil? Yes. Ah, well, a special thumbs up to Flavio. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. I know, uh, Brazil's having okay. a hard time at the moment, so we'll stay safe. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll all come out of this even better for sure. Yeah. So let's talk okay, about the FC80 so, yeah. now. Sediment. Now we, now we can see an FC80 uh, flow and sediment. So this is an 80 millimeter wide, so about, about that wide. Um, available in 2.5 meter and 5 meter long in, in length. We're looking at, in, and they're sediment transport channels um, with a starter kit for models and instruments. What does it do? What it, it, it provides students with the ability to study various effects of sediment transport, really. We can look at bed form, dynamics, and also flow about weirs and other objects in an open channel. 
So with all of these that we've mentioned today, we've got videos on them. This particular one has an inclinometer on it. Uh, anybody who watched the outtakes video at 1900 subscribers <laughs> will, will appreciate the challenges I had with the word inclinometer. Uh, it's a wonderful word. It is. I, word. I'm very adept at saying it now, but I did wonderful, struggle at yeah. the time. But we've got, right, tell us a bit more about flow and uh, pressure measurement, Dave. What well, we offer flow here. Pressure, yeah, we have a, a wide range of equipments that can be associated with those keywords. Now, the FC, ah, my, I'm getting mixed up. The FC15 is quite a new piece of equipment. I believe Dion has done a lot of marketing work on that. Um, this is an entry level piece of equipment looking at flow patterns around weirs and other objects in, a, in an open channel. That um, picture doesn't do it justice at all, quite no, frankly, it because it's such a visual thing. It, it, it's a fairly compact unit that sits on top of the hydraulic bench. And in terms of just illustrating those very uh, visual flow patterns, uh, you can even put icebergs in it and things like that. It's quite, uh, quite versatile. Yeah. And if you're going to put an iceberg in, you've got to put a few penguins in as well to make it yeah. real. Real Antarctica, you know. Now we've got to have ducks inside the flow channel, then, Dave. Ah, uh, well, this could get messy. Rubber ducks, maybe, but not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on, yeah, we we can see a discharge over a notch in the middle there. That's an H six. Um, it's basically a tank with a set of notched weirs to look at flow regulation and measurement devices. Again, this sits on top of our hydraulic bench okay and then not to scale but we can also see on that page an h408 this is a fluid friction apparatus again it's mobile it's a vertical panel many different pipe configurations we look at flow we look at losses different pipes fittings and valves there's a pitot tube a venturi an orifice meter to look at flow measurement and finally, finally, the actual piece we've got called the flow measurement, which is the H10. Um, there's a, a venturi meter, an orifice, um, and a rotor meter, all demonstrating different methods for measuring or calculating the flow rate. Okay. Is what I didn't mention this earlier, Dave, is how uh, the fluid mechanics range can be used and is used in mo many different degrees and college programs, whether it's specific uh, for sure. training nuclear engineers yeah. or whether it's basics from mechanical engineers or whether it's petroleum engineers or environmental engineers. I think even the fluid friction apparatus, is that relevant for the likes of plumbers to understand? Oh my goodness, yeah. I mean, if you've, if you've got to design um, an HVAC system or a heating system for a, for a factory, you need to know what rating pump to use to get that water flowing all around the different angles, the different lengths of pipes. So knowing, knowing the effects of friction in a pipe is, is, is absolutely huge. It's a huge thing because it's real. We, we see on our H7, for example, on a thin bore diameter tube, just, just how much the pressure drops from one end of the pipe to another. So it's it's absolutely critical, Dion. Yeah. Um, well, I just want to do some more shout outs now. We have got Balaji from India. We've got Marcus. Marcus, I'm not sure where you're from. Please do let us know. It's <laughs> great to know where everybody is from um, and we've got Adnan who's joined us watching today as well. Yes we know I think Marcus I mean I, I know a few Marcus. Marcus Tizijimoto sorry Marcus. Brazil. Okay. Nobody doctor. And ah. Adnan I, I believe Adnan is from a small village called Spondon in yep. Derbyshire. Spondon I believe. stroke um, Morocco. <laughs> where his head at, head's at. Yeah. Right, let's well, talk about uh, hydrostatics and properties of fluids now, Dave. Okay, well, on, on the left there, we can see the H2, which is a metacentric height and stability. Or well, what's, what's all that about? Well, this is a bench-mounted piece of equipment. Um, it determines the stability of a pontoon, and that can be a floating bridge 
or even even a yacht or a boat okay so we look at its center of gravity the metacentric height at various heights okay now don't ask me to define metacentric because i'm going to admit there i've not quite done my homework not knowing what's coming up next on these on these slides so come back to me on that if, if anybody wants to know okay uh moving on we have the ever popular h314 which is our hydrostatics and properties believe it or not there are actually 14 experiments on this rig alone we're looking at viscosity surface tension uh pascal's law we learn about um central pressure we look at simple scales how to measure the volume of water uh we look at density archimedes principle and so on and so on i've pretty much covered nearly all of them there but you have and if you haven't dave there's a video <laughs> on it would you believe yeah, yeah. Um, much like there's a video on viscosity and particle drag, I like the hydrostatics and property of fluids because it is it's mobile and it's just like a lab ready to go with so many different things on it. I know. I mean, even that, even the H410 will just merge what I'm talking about. This is such a simple piece of equipment. It's self-standing, stands on the floor. We simply drop spheres, um, ball bearings. And it demonstrates the drag or the drag coefficient of different size of these spheres. And it, able, it enables you to look at the viscosity of the liquids as well. So Dion's gone on to the next slide. Just two products on the vortices and cavitation. So the cavitation unit is on the left. It looks at cavitation of uh, through a venturi and it, you understand the implications of this performance in machines and systems. Now, the H14 is a much smaller piece of equipment. This double walled see through vessel demonstrates the phenomena of a vortex, be it a free vortex or a forced vortex. And with a measurement device included, you can actually look at the profile of the vortex and you can calculate the surface profile as well. That must be quite a nice visual piece of equipment. I've not it used is. it myself, actually. I have used it a lot. Um, yeah. It's very, very interesting to look at. You have to get eye level with it to, to truly appreciate the pattern of the vortex, which is actually a beautiful thing as well. OK, brilliant. Right. Let's talk about pipe friction and energy loss and pipe surge and water hammer. Oh, OK. So we've got a lot of equipment on there. Um, the water hammer, the, the T86, I've only installed one or two of these. Um, in I think that was in Saudi Arabia. Um, it, it basically does what it says. It demonstrates water hammer and cavitation. And we are able to look at the shock waves at, at, at a sonic velocity in the water, okay? Dave, what is yeah. water hammer, quickly? Just okay, to... if, okay, if you, if you are running a tap at home, and it, especially if you live in an older house, which we do here, mm -hmm. if you're running a cold water tap and you suddenly turn off that tap, well, there, there has to be an impact and there's a shock wave that goes back along your your water pipe and you can hear quite literally a hammer noise a hammer okay well that's that's in the domestic environment but where do we see this in the real world well in dams if you've got a hydroelectric dam okay hmm. you've got a turbine at the base of the base of the dam the turbine is fed by a, by, a, by a surge of water but if we want to suddenly restrict the output of this power station we have to suddenly restrict the water hitting the turbine. Well, we do that by, by a valve, but by, by turning that valve, you, we could be forced with a, with a large uh, back, back surge, okay? So we have, a, we have a surge tower. So we see a pipe surge and we see um, a water hammer, but that pipe surge is a virg vertical pipe and it releases it releases all that tension and energy in the in the pipe to the to the turbine. So our equipment it demonstrates it demonstrates both 
pipe surge and the water hammer using uh, transducers that calculate this water hammer. And also we're able to see the sine wave effect of the pipe surge. So it's a very, very um, interesting piece of kit to work on. Brilliant. And there are okay. meters and meters of copper piping on that apparatus. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah. I can't remember. I think, I think there's about 30 meters. Mm, it's something quite I think astounding. So. Yeah. Maybe, maybe somebody online at TQ can correct me. I seem to think it's about 30 meters of copper pipe that we spiral around to give that, to give that um, circuit, uh, that water hammer circuit. Okay. So there's a challenge for Bruno, Adnan and Phil who are watching this uh, from the sales team right now. Get on our website and start researching that because I simply can't do that so I'm, while we're multitasking here. And tell us the answer. See if you can find out if it's 30 metres or if any of our engineers are watching today. Do put yeah. your comments in the comment box. I'd like to quickly say hello to Hani who has joined us from Saudi as well. Great Hi, to Hani. see you. Welcome. Yeah. Right, uh, so now we've got uh, more water hammer okay. and pipe surge. Yeah, we've got two more products on, on that page. So we've got the H16. With this, we, we look at pressure losses, okay? Several different pipes, different bore diameters, different circuit arrangements, different components. Um, and But this, this is a sort of application we would see in central heating systems around the home, Okay. or in an industrial environment okay equally with the h34 um this is a very compact unit bench top apparatus again has to use the hydraulic bench which is fundamental to most of the hydraulic uh, fluid mechanics equipment that we use um but this this compares pressure losses um in popular fittings in a in in small bore pipe work okay okay right good 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 next what do we have next oh am i ready to turn over sorry i'm you a bit behind the over. times here we time go to talking to the hydraulic you. bench here we are h1f ah, well, and all I've of these wonderful little yeah, ex I've, experiments and larger yeah, experiments I've too i've mentioned the hydraulic bench um so what we can see three six nine twelve we can see 18 or so experiments and the digital hydraulic bench is absolutely mm -hmm. fundamental to the success of running these equipments because these equipments need a supply of water and the hydraulic bench, the H1S, delivers that flow of water. The, the, why, what's the digital mean? Well, the digital means it actually calculates the flow rate. So on the older TQ, um, hydraulic benches, the gravimetric, we would use weights, a moment arm with a known weight of water. So that would give a flow rate in kilograms per minute. The, and the H1D, um, that was the volumetric flow bench. And we've known, we have a known volume of water passing over a certain amount of time. So that gives us our flow rate. But the H1F, well, this is a game changer. We actually have a digital display and it delivers a known volume in kilograms per second or kilograms per minute. Um, it's liters worth per mentioning, minute, sorry, liters, Dave. Liters. Sorry to yeah. disturb you. It's worth no, mentioning no, okay. that if you have got a gravimetric hydraulic bench, there is an upgrade kit uh, where you can integrate the digital reader and all the digital measurement apparatus into your gravimetric device. And yes. this is what I was talking about in terms of at the beginning of the webinar about making products uh, faster and more efficient. I would like to do a few more shout outs. We've got people from the Philippines. We've got Mina from the Philippines. We've also got Nicola from Sicily as well in Italy. Uh, great to see you both joining us as well today. Oh, this is absolutely amazing. We, we, we are literally reaching out to all four or more corners of the world here. Uh, the countries that are watching in, this is amazing, man. It, it, it is. Says, I tell you what, the buzz we get after this is absolutely fantastic. We're on a real high after these webinars, aren't we, Dave? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, the, the success of these webinars is, is completely judged on not so much the numbers of the viewers, but where you're coming in from. You know, you've taken the time 
to come onto here to listen to us, to look at the product. So, you know, I, I hope I hope this is a two way thing, and I, and I really do hope that you're getting as much out of this as as we are from from it as well. Right, great. Let's talk about laminar and turbulent flow. We've got the Osborne Reynolds apparatus as one of the big ones here. For we this do. One. So just going from left to right, uh, we've got friction loss. Um, well, we, we, we look at laminar and turbulent flow and Dion's jumped to the H215, which is one of my favourite pieces of equipment. Um, and I'll just keep quiet in case Dion wants to narrate it's all right. There. You carry on talking through it because uh, I'm I'm on silent there. You're on silent. Okay. Okay. So the H215, it's it's a completely visual piece of equipment, and it allows us to look at laminar and turbulent flow. But you, as a user, you get to actually calculate the Reynolds number. Okay. So this is a dimensionless number. It is just a figure. And because we can offer the H215A, we can see what the effects of heating the water does to the Reynolds number. So it's a very, very visual effect, effective piece of equipment there. So there we can see a thin stream of ink that passes through a tube and we can observe from laminar to transition to fully turbulent flow condition. So yeah, one of one of my favorite pieces of equipment and a very popular piece of equipment as well. Okay, so what do we have next? Next up, we have hydrostatics. I like these, these particular two larger apparatus. <laughs> yeah. Hydrology, hydrology. Yeah, sorry, wrong thing, hydrology. <laughs> yeah, these, these are super pieces of apparatus. And I, I recently installed some of these in Ghana. Um, so on the left hand side, we have uh, the permeability um, tank. So we look and look at flow nets. Uh, we look and look and um, we study Darcy's law. We, we look at the flow through a perme permeable medium. So this will be sand in this case. This will be relevant in structures such as dams and walls. Okay. So this picture again doesn't really do it justice. I'd look at the video because the video has got yeah. sand banked up in it. You can see how you can draw on the side of the tank and things. Um, yeah. It really is quite a cool piece of equipment. It is too. And equally, if you go to the top left, we have the H313. Um, we look at hydrology. Um, it includes a rainfall apparatus. We look at um, the movement of water. Um, over land and rivers. So we have sprinklers, we have rainfall, and we have sand in the base of that tank. Um, and the H3 again, that was Sorry, Dave, before you move yeah. on, to, again, that's one of my favourite pieces of equipment. We've got a really <laughs> yeah. nice video, which was filmed at the University of Nottingham. They've put little houses in there. They have. But, uh, I know I was speaking to a university in Canada, and they were saying they have a lot of issues in terms of... Um, kind of flood damage in the basement of their houses and this is where this kind of piece of apparatus really comes into play in terms of understanding that groundwater flow yes and um, you can get different waves of rain coming over different parts of the can. tank it is yeah. quite versatile and quite good fun as well in fact on a previous trip to america i went to the u.s naval academy in um Oh, where was the place called Annapolis um, and their whole basement flooded and they actually did have an H313 there which was kind of ironic so that was a good good, good cause for the conversation um, going back to the H311 so that just looks at um, set the settling characteristics of solids and the display of the effects on the wall so it all linked into hydrology there Dion so do you put sand in there or different types of fluid? Um... Different types of fluid. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay, so flow visualization. Well, I know yourself, uh, you, Dion, that you've spent some time doing some videos and uh, marketing on this, but I'll give a quick narrative of what it is. Um, it's a Helishaw apparatus and it demonstrates you can look at two dimensional laminar flow, not turbulent, 
just laminar around different shaped models and we encourage the students to make their own models so that can be an aerofoil it can be a circle we supply a roll of rubbish sheet and we and you we we cut out models and you can see on that video there the the flow patterns and around the models but i must stress this is a laminar flow condition right there we go great yeah. there we are uh, the modular fluid power range now yeah Hopefully okay you can see that good yeah so modular fluid power or mfp for short um in this range we are looking at thermodynamics we're looking at thermo we're looking at pumps we study action of turbines a compressor even fans and and fluid so a wide range of disciplines are covered by by the mfp range deal brilliant okay well that now takes us you've provided a whole overview that's not all of our products though it's, it's important to say if you want to see all of the products within the fluid mechanics range you do hop over to our website or if you've got a copy of our catalog you can see them all in there now Absolutely. we're going to talk a little bit about some different case studies around the world so you can understand how these different how different selections of products are used in different setups uh, and a few thoughts from some of the academics who've been working with them. Shall we go for Texas A&M first? This is a well, huge yeah, service. we'll share, we'll share yeah. this, this narrative. Um, I installed many pieces of equipment um, in November, I think it was in November 2018, pretty sure it was, a uh, massive range of, of different equipment they have a flume they have uh, bench top equipment they have, they have h10 flow measurement h6 um, a lot of thermodynamics as well so a lot of heat transfer this was in a showcase building in the, in the zachary building um, in, in texas so a, a, a wonderful showcase visit and a two-week visit as well that was that was properly full-on as they say Brilliant. And Nottingham Trent University, have you been along to their new building yet, Dave? Just the once, actually. Um, we went with engineering to their new building about two or probably three months ago to listen to their um, comments and their feedback on all the equipment. And it was an absolute wonderful visit. Very, very constructive. They have aerodynamics, they have fluids, um, they have thermodynamics. And again, this is a wonderful wonderful showcase building yeah and as dave said yes we've got aerodynamics we've got fluids in here i'm not sure if we can actually see the fluids in yeah, itself some, but but they have some got engineering kits there in in there uh, if you want to see more there's this whole video case study um, and you can learn more about that during that video sure. so the the next one is birmingham city university and um, here we have Carl. Yes, we got wind tunnels there. I was there not not too long ago. It spread around the basement in the building. Uh, they've got a, a subsonic wind tunnel. They've even got um, a TD200 single cylinder engine test set, a range of fluid mechanics, a range of engineering science. Basically, a good a good range from from all of, nearly all of our product ranges. Yeah, uh, I know that one of the, here we go, we've got the FT50 here, um, and the students, when we were filming at the time, oh, yeah. they yeah. were, they were, oops, Daisy, you'll have to go and have a look at it for more detail. Um, they were uh, doing some research on that particular flow channel. Right, yeah, uh, yeah, so splendid. Again, if you want to see that in more detail, do hop over to the, uh, the, the YouTube channel playlist and uh, find it there. You can sit, use it in the search box as well and find it quite easily. Yeah, yeah. Next is Canada. Yeah, we well, this is, a, Canada. this is a university I've not been to, but I know, you, I think you've been involved in some marketing uh, opportunities there, Dion. But That's I do know, right. yeah. 
Absolutely. We've got a, um, a very enigmatic um, lecturer who's Dean Milton here. He's got actually a video that he did while he was uh, at our factory. Um, he came over to visit. He, w w they've been using our equipment for decade upon oh, decade, yeah, sure. going back to the 1960s. Uh, every year they, ha uh, they have a different generation of all the different hydraulic benches that go back to the 1960s. Uh, in fact, their oldest ones they gave to a local college because they'd upgraded to new ones, but they were still working. Um, and here Dean is explaining um, some of our experiments that mount on top of the hydraulic bench there and how it all works, a bit of theory. Yeah, yeah. Dean that. actually came to, to Tech Equipment uh, over just about a year ago and his knowledge... Well, I think knowledge, it was about two years ago now, was actually. It? it was just as wow. I'd started, yes. His knowledge is fantastic. And for me personally, he's, he's approaching legendary status. Um, you know, he, his enthusiasm and, and, and the feedback we get from this, this guy is, is extraordinary. Brilliant. Uh, do have a look at his video. I'd encourage you. I'll put the links in... Uh, in the description box once we're done with this. But in terms of what they do there, they've got lots of the hydraulic benches with different experiments, but they are teaching, as I mentioned earlier, lots of different disciplines. They've got environmental engineering, industrial engineering, petroleum engineering, and the hydraulic bench and all the experiments are being used for all of those different courses at the University of Regina in Canada. So, yeah. Yeah. So what do we have up next, apart from Dean Milton? We have the University of Derby, which is very close to us, and they have the massively impressive 10 metre, 300 millimetre flume. And actually, yeah. these guys are on the front page of our 2020 catalogue. Yeah, yes, they are. Yeah. Um, yeah, not, not only do they have the, the impressive uh, flume, they've also got a GT100 um, turbojet trainer uh, just across the corridor as well. So a, a, a good reference site um, in Derby. And I think they, they may have an FC50 as well in that same room with the, really? uh, with the yeah, FC300. I, I, I can't recall. They have a fantastic recall. setup. I mean, it was quite a squeeze. To, it was very much of a squeeze to get this flume into this lab. Um, uh, because of the way the ceilings were structured uh, actually looking you can't believe that we got these pictures in here because the the ceilings are so limiting but they've got a massive screen connected to the end uh, with and they put a camera inside of the flume um, yeah. and we work though with them closely on R&D for the development of new ancillaries to go in these flumes and they are really um, pushing the, the boundaries in terms of being able to do fantastic research in this flume as well there's a little video case study on that as well if you are interested now i talked about nuclear earlier and we talked about nuclear in our q a live yesterday um, and this is a prime example the national college of nuclear used many different products in in various of our different ranges particularly fluid uh, they you know, obviously, they need to look at friction in losses of pipe. Oh, definitely, definitely, pumps, yeah. Badoulis, etc. Uh, along with the control and the structures and the thermodynamics and materials testing and properties. And it's particularly important when I spoke to the academic there because of the nature of the nuclear industry. Uh, they can't just have students go in into the working environment uh, and work on the job, learn on the job. It's a, a very, um, you have to be very safety conscious. So they need to know their stuff. They need to really work within practical applications before they Absolutely. get into the workplace. Yep. Yeah, and what better place to start with, with some hands-on equipment? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's it from us for case studies. You mentioned a few others as well. Did you mention one in Ethiopia, Dave, earlier? Oh, well, yeah, that was a, that was a fantastic visit. Um, incredible experience in every, in, in every sense, uh, in all, for good reasons. Huge range of equipment at Deborah Marcos, yeah, um, and satisfied customers as well. Wonderful. Now I've got a question for you, Dave. Henry Anto's got a question. They have a flume that's five meters, uh, 7.5 meters, 10 meters, and 15 meters. Which one has VDAS on them? I don't think they're 
VDAS is available on the flumes because th there is nothing that is actually being captured. All your readings come from pitot tubes, depths of the water. The, the flow rate comes from the digital um, display on the flume and the, the incline comes from a digital, but um, there is no VDAS available with the flumes. Not, not, okay. not that I know. Maybe, right. maybe it's in, in development, but I've not seen this yet. Okay, good. Thank you for that. Uh, don't forget this is live, so you can put your uh, questions in the chat box and we'll put them to Dave. Right. Uh, now I want to talk a little bit more, not about Texas A&M, because we have already um, looked at Texas A&M, but I want to talk about remote learning support. Many people are still limited in terms of uh, not being able to get into their labs at the moment, or maybe they're allowed in the labs, but your students aren't. Maybe you're thinking about how can you facilitate remote learning? And we're trying as an organization to best support you in this very difficult time. Um, one of the things that you can utilize is uh, the communities. I mentioned those communities earlier, that we have academic communities on LinkedIn, and Facebook. Look at that. I've just had a suite delivered for me for my child to keep me going. That is wonderful. Um, so do check out those communities on LinkedIn and Facebook. We also have a general community on YouTube, uh, which everybody can access. So share your ideas, uh, post polls, etc. Um, okay, so uh, let's now talk about what else we do in terms of the tips video. We have also got, if you're thinking about creating your own lab experiment videos, we've created a how to kind of top nine tips for creating a lab experiment video. Uh, here we go. We can have a look at that. I'll briefly take you through it. There we go. There's tips on lighting. There's tips on um, actually framing your experiment, keeping your background to a minimum, etc. So have a look at that and uh, make use of it if you can. Right. Uh, Something else that I want to talk about in our remote learning is that we're doing these webinars. Um, but we also are delivering a live Q&A session. So every Wednesday, do ignore the time on there. It's actually every Wednesday at one o'clock on Instagram, two o'clock on YouTube. We have live Q&A sessions with myself and with Digital Dave. Uh, this is your opportunity to ask technical questions and theory. We also feature, where possible, a guest every week. Uh, if you're interested in being a guest and on one of our live Q&As, uh, let me know in the chat box. We can have a discussion about you joining us, perhaps uh, sharing a different perspective on engineering or engineering education. We've also got various other resources available for you. If you look at techquipment.com forward slash remote dash learning dash support, you can find material on there. We've got an engineering videos guide. These are uh, a guide, a PDF, where you can uh, find all kinds of different engineering teaching videos, not necessarily from tech equipment, um, that may enhance your online learning uh, with students. Then we have a growing expanse of student experiment videos. And they are available. You can watch them on YouTube. Um, do check them out. There's, we release one at the moment. We're, we're releasing one every week. So have a look at those. And they cover all the different product ranges in there. OK, so that's less about remote learning. Now, Dave, I wondered uh, if you can give me a bit more of a range overview. For everybody who's uh, with us to now, we have finished yeah. looking at fluid mechanics, and you can watch this on demand again to cover that. Uh, but we're going to have a look at all the other ranges quickly. Uh, do yeah, post sure. your questions. Let's go through them. Let's in, start with. In the chat yeah. box. But before we move on, Bruno um, has answered and clarified uh, the VDAS question <laughs> okay. for us. So thank you, Bruno. Bruno has said the FC100, that is the larger flumes, are VDAS compatible? Wow, fantastic. 
That's Thank good to you, hear. Bruno. Keep up the good work in the background there. So, Dave. Okay, so let's just science. go through these product ranges then. Uh, let's 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 start with engineering science. That's a good place to start, as any. Yeah. There we go. So this is this is a, a modular range of eighteen experiments. Um, these experiments look at the basics of uh, moments, friction, cams, uh, tensile, and they all sit on the the work panel on top of the unit, either in uh, landscape or portrait. So a real good introduction to mechanical engineering. Okay. Brilliant. Sorry, I'm multitasking here with messages ah, from multiple people. And uh, uh, we've already we've already <laughs> spoken about fluid mechanics, so we we can jump to maybe engines. I think that's pretty close by. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, we're on fluid mechanics. No, we've already done fluid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get yeah. me the program. Uh, yeah, I'm on, just uh, trying to monitor the messages that are being sent to me on the phone and messages on the screen. Yeah. Uh, just engines. To, we've got. Engines. But quickly before you move on, there is more clarification uh, from Andra, uh, from Adnan saying there is BDAS on the flumes. Right. OK, let, fantastic. Let carry on. Crack on with the engines. I know you like the engines. Oh, I do like the engines. Yeah. Yeah. So these are these are internal combustion engines, uh, single cylinder, either diesel or gasoline. Uh, but under the engines umbrella, we, we also should talk about our gas turbines where we have the GT100 um, turbojet trainer or the twin shaft gas turbine with GT185. So um, a broad range of equipment within the, within the engines. Uh, moving on to control engineering. Yeah, well, this, is, this looks at control engineering principles, We're looking at fundamental to advanced investigations into, into control principles often found in, in industry. So this could be, for example, um, stability control of an aircraft and ships. All of the CE range includes um, our unique um, S, uh, CE2000 software. Um, and with this software, we can also uh, use it for simulated control experiments. And that kind of leads us on nicely to process control demonstrating fundamental and advanced studies of real life processes. So that could be, for example, PID and cascade control of pressure, flow, level um, and temperature. Again, there is dedicated software developed by TQ that supports this process control range. Now onto something completely different, that'll be the electrical power systems. Um, this, this provides advanced technical teaching and training equipment for all elements of a power system. OK, so that that would include generation, uh, transformation, transmission, distribution and protection all in all under that um, umbrella. So these scalable products give a real hands on learning of a power system with the options of different hardware and software, including, for example, a second generator and a SCADA system, which is a remote control and data acquisition, okay? Brilliant, and next up we have, we have materials testing. Yeah, well, again, another favorite because we actually get to break things deliberately in a controlled manner <laughs> so we are looking at properties of material testing which and this is fundamental part of engineering courses okay it's absolutely crucial a very comprehensive range we're looking at tension compression hardness stress strain and structural experiments um a lot of these products include a local digital display, looking at the force, for example, data values, and uh, it's it. You, you can take the manual readings, or you can use VDAS, um, which supports this range highly. Uh, we were talking about concrete yesterday, weren't we? And putting concrete into some we of the uh, yeah. 
the different apparatus. If you want to know more about um, how you might you, uh, use create your own concrete specimens and test that and uh, things like the universal testing machine, do have a look at our Q&A live yesterday. That was the 20th of May. Yeah. Right. Cool. Next one is environmental next. control. What's next? What's next? EC, environmental control. Yeah. If you want to study the fundamental theories associated with thermo uh, fluids and heat transfer, then this range is perfect. It covers cooling, it covers refrigeration and, and basic air conditioning, but also humidity as well. So th that all those topics I mentioned there fall under environmental control. And we do have something really exciting, quite a significant product coming up in the very near future. Uh, that So do watch this space as you look for a very <laughs> comprehensive solution within yeah. the environmental control range. Next one up is going to be thermodynamics. And that's the one we're doing a webinar on next week. We are. So I'll, I'll go into a little bit of detail now, but maybe withhold um, the juicy bits. Yeah, but hold back, Dave, get... hold back. <laughs> This is small scale equipment uh, looking at the laws of thermodynamics, okay? Uh, these are real working systems using real industrial components in many cases. Uh, the, the, the range can cover uh, gas turbines, um, engine test sets, um, and, and, and much more. But we'll, we'll keep this for next week. So do join us back again, 1 p.m. BST, for a thermodynamics um, teaching overview. Absolutely. Structures are our TQ uh, market leaders um, in, in a range of modular structures experiments, okay? They, we, are covered, we cover statics. There are, uh, I think there's 19, 19 structures experiments. The hardware can be used as standalone or with the STR2000, we can use it for ADA, or the third option for data, uh, data capture is the, is the virtual experiment. So very, very wide range of experiments, including beams, um, bars, davits, Euler struts, um, bridges, pin joints, redundant truss, a whole range of experiments that you find in structural engineering. In fact, we have more exciting news on the structures range as well. Um, I, so do keep an ear out for news, new product news from yes. us on there. Keep an ear out. I do like that. I like yeah, that. Keep ear, an, an ear, ear out. out. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to use that from now keep, on. Keep an eye out as well. Watching you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, BDAS, a hot topic, this one today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, this is Tech Equipment's proprietary software. Uh, designed by TQ to work across a huge multiple range of products, okay? Um, the software itself is free of charge. Um, the hardware, of course, is, is chargeable. Um, it ensures accurate data capture, very easy to use, uh, get a good understanding of, of how the equipment works. Very, very user-friendly large displays for example uh, you can select user user choice of analog or digital gauges so um it's on some products it, it is almost essential for example if you've got a, a million data sets to capture uh vdas is the is the obvious choice and when dave says that it's it's uh, the software is free it's actually more than just free it's so accessible that we uh, let anybody download it uh, okay. we've got it on our website so if students are wanting to use their own laptops and connect up to the vdas hardware they can download the software onto their own um, machines and run it from there but yes, then they can not... also yeah I think it's worth noting if they have got the data on their university computer, you can export it to Excel, can't you, so that you can do further analysis you can. afterwards. Yes, you, you can share the data file, then send off the students with their laptops and, and do the magic with, with the VDAS um, and do all the graph work that's been generated by, by VDAS. Yeah. 
And so long. Okay. Uh, very How's the subject. sun with you today? Do you think you could uh, get a good uh, energy generation from the sun yes, in your definitely. back garden? Yeah, definitely. Um, clear skies today, slightly lower temperatures than yesterday. Um, but yeah, perfect for, for solar experiments. So this range of teaching equipment, it studies the core principles of solar energy. So we've got uh, photovoltaic cells in the center there. We've got a flat plate um, solar energy collector, focusing solar energy collectors. So students can learn about the efficiencies of these systems, but also their, their downside, their, their limitations on, on why they are not so good if not you if used in the wrong application as well. And aerodynamics, yeah, one of my one of my favorite ranges there. Um, this is an outstanding range of, of equipment used for engineering, for aerospace, and for educational uh, teaching environment. Covers the whole subject area of aerodynamics and airflow from the basic principles also up to research level on our much larger um, wind tunnels. Um, we've got cost effective, uh, low speed airflow bench, modular airflow bench, the AF10, where we've got eight or so different experiments. We have subsonic wind tunnels, we have supersonic wind tunnels, and also a, a wind tunnel where you actually get to fly a plane, which is very, very dynamic. Um, again, using VDAS to capture that data um, as accurately as we can. You so can learn more about all of these, actually, can't we? In the webinar yeah. that we did a few weeks ago, that's that will be in the links below, and we'll we'll put it up to click on at the end of this on-demand version. As yeah, well. and that that picture that you see there was an installation that I completed at Auburn College in Alabama. Um, late last year, maybe last autumn actually. Um, they also have a supersonic intermittent uh, wind tunnel as well. And theory machines, that's also a very popular range within our product. So just in a gearbox there, we can see gears, we can observe vibrations, uh, whirling of shafts, uh, journal bearing apparatus, so again, a, a wide range of modular teaching equipment, looking at uh, all those different um, subject areas. So it can be cams, it can be gears, uh, vibrations and so on. And again, we did a webinar on this one last week. We so did a webinar on that do last week, yeah. Check out that webinar for all the details. Do I so. I think that brings us to a close on the ranges. If you're still with us, stay with us a few minutes more. Uh, this is we're going to come to the Q&A section at the very end. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about a student competition in particular. Uh, I've been absorbed this morning in doing a video compiling all the competition entries from Nottingham Trent University, which you'll be able to watch very soon. The idea, and this is available to all universities and colleges around the world that are using tech equipment products. This is the opportunity to get your students more engaged um, and achieve their communication goals. So the idea is you can inv get involved in tech equipment sponsored student competitions in two different ways. The first most basic way is uh, doing a local level competition within your university, pretty much like what the students at Nottingham Trent University have done. They've got the mechanical engineering course as part of the um, the thermofluids module, in fact, the whole of the thermofluids, measurable part of the thermofluids module there, is based on creating a five minute video that looks at a theory uh, within thermo and fluids. Uh, 
proves it, experiments it, challenges it, uh, does the experiment, uh, they do the analysis and come to the conclusions at the end. And this has been the source for all the student videos that you'll be seeing coming out every week. So you can be part of that. You could run your own local university college level competition where teams compete against each other. Then once they've done that, and we will provide prizes and trophies, etc., and world fame, uh, then we they, they can go through, the winner of each one of those can go through to the international competition. So the winner of Nottingham Trent University, uh, I almost said what team it was then, but we haven't officially announced it yet. So you'll have to wait and watch the video there to find out who the winner, which group is the winner. Um, will go up against the winner from Texas A&M, for example, they were talking about doing it this year, we will go up against the, the likes of the winners from Edwards College and whomever else chooses to get involved. So every year there'll be a big best of the best group of students internationally, uh, the global winner of the Tech Equipment Student Competition. So do contact me uh, for more information about how you might get involved. As part of being a holistic partner in teaching, we also like to uh, help provide additional insight. And that's uh, one thing that drove us to come up with a, a survey that looked at perceptions of practical teaching and engineering education. Now, it'll be interesting to see uh, what these variations may be after COVID-19. So we looked at perceptions around uh, how important they felt practical teaching was for the employability of students. In fact, there's a massive 90% of academics believe that practical learning is extremely important for students' employability. Then we talked about a motivation, how motivated are students to be involved in practical? And we were quite reassured to see that nearly 54% of students said they were very motivated. But then we asked also, how do you think we could improve student motivation. Um, so state of the art equipment is one of those. Uh, providing students with activities that are innovative and challenging and engaging with instructional activities. Uh, introducing real life engineering problems. Now there's many elements of this survey. Do check it out if you want to, um, if you're interested in learning more about those perceptions from the industry. We surveyed people uh, from across the world, over a hundred different individuals during that survey. So that's uh, now time where we come on to the Q&A section. The yeah, opportunity we'll... to yeah. ask your questions. I mean, we had a, we had a few questions during the presentation, which was a good thing. So, indeed, not... we did. So, Dave, I'm going to start off uh, with saying um, I want to. I just want to understand and get a real visual. Not me personally, but I'm I'm pretending to be an <laughs> academic here. Me pretending to be an academic wants to understand and be able to illustrate flow really really well um i want to be able to use something that i can use for when we have open days as well that is, that's easy to set up and run what kind of apparatus do you think you'd be recommending for that well that, i mean I, i'm not sure whether we're in an aerodynamics environment or fluid dynamics uh fluid mechanics but if you're in an aero environment we have the f uh, af80 which is um uses smoke to look at flow patterns around various shapes and and models we may even be talking about having a subsonic wind tunnel with an aerofoil looking at flow over those wings and looking at the stalling and the flow separation on on that aerofoil or we could go back to fluid mechanics and look at the previous product we looked at earlier, which is the Helishaw apparatus, which is looking at two dimensional flow around different shapes and and models. So the user would be they would need to be a little bit more specific. Are they in an aero lab or are they next door in a fluids lab? Well, okay. I was thinking a bit more in a fluids lab, but then there is a crossover, isn't there? There because, is for sure. Absolutely, yeah, there's so a crossover, yeah. It may be yeah. that even if you're in an yeah. aero lab, 
you want to look at the flow visualization uh, channel, the FC15, for example, just well, a very the, the, visual that, thing, maybe. Those that looked at our Aero um, webinar, I would have explained how fluid mechanics is directly linked to aerodynamics when I explained that um, a Venturi, a wing on an aircraft is half a Venturi, where we see uh, increase in velocity of air and a reduction in pressure um, under the wing or over the wing, as opposed to a Venturi. So the, 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 the two subject areas are closely linked. Brilliant. Thank you, Dave. Um, now, I've had a question from Balaji. I think Balaji is in India. Is there any module to provide simulation training to students during this pandemic situation? Oh, that might be one for you, Dion. Yes, that is a tricky one. Um, unfortunately, we don't. Um, we are trying to uh, offer the market the most we can through uh, videos. I think you really need to have a look through our YouTube channel. There's lots of the student demonstration videos that uh, they're actually bringing up the theory as well. So they explain the theory, they go through the maths. I think they're a fantastic choice for you to uh, use in terms of your remote learning. I think some of uh, the other user uh, student demonstration videos we have online as well. The Helen Shores was a prime example. Uh, you could see where we're actually running the apparatus. And some of the customer care videos that the likes of you, Dave, have done and Matt Fellows did as well, where you actually assembled apparatus. So for students that are wanting to explain uh, in a report how they did something, perhaps they've done it in the past, but they've forgotten how to do it and they need a video as a prompt those are really good resources. If yeah. you have got any specific needs in terms of uh, addressing a certain topic, then do contact to us. We might be able to help you out. We have been able to help some people out. Uh, for example, we had one institution in Lebanon and they were, they were learning about the gas turbine. Dave has a lot of knowledge on that and we were able to do a little lesson with a group of 25, 30 students there working with their lecturer and with Dave explaining how the gas turbine works as well. So there are options. Uh, do get in contact with us. Let's have a one-to-one -one dialogue about how we can help you because everybody has their different needs and different requirements. Certainly. I hope I know, I know that hasn't given you full yes answer, but it means that we are willing to help you in every possible way we can. Now. I think that pretty much brings us a to a close, Dave. We have had an absolutely brilliant session today. We've had so many people around the world join us, uh, put comments in the chat box. That means a lot to us, a huge amount, because we're in our home offices. You can't actually see here because I've got the tech equipment logo hovering <laughs> in the background. I'm in the corner of my living room. And Dave, where are you? you're in a bedroom there, I think, at the back. Well, I'm, I'm in what I call a study, OK? OK. Um, you know, every every interview on television now, you, you've got to have your, your, your obligatory bookcase in, in the background. Is that correct? Well, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, some people are just being fake, frankly. Well, look, uh, this is, this is, I hope you can see this. Oh, you have got your obligatory bookcase. There you go. That's oh, my bookcase. Well. And it's, it's rammed full of travel books and Lonely Planet books and all sorts of adventure books. So, yeah, that's my, that's my bookcase, OK? Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I, once I've read a book, I tend to get rid of it. So my bookcase is quite limited frankly <laughs> but i do still read plenty anyway um everybody uh last call for questions if we missed you and you think about it in five ten minutes do put it in the comments box and we will get back to you you could even come back to the thermodynamics webinar and ask your fluid mechanics question then or join us every week for the Wednesday Q&A live sessions that we hold yeah. at one o'clock on BST on Instagram and two o'clock BST on YouTube. Yeah, come and join Thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everybody from yeah, around the world. For this is us signing out for today. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>